us to another episode in a series of episodes where we are focusing on the November 2022 biology paper 2. So in case you are coming across this YouTube channel for the first time, please head to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button because of so much content on our channel. We've covered mathematics, sciences and now biology from 2017, all the past papers, you find all the answers explained extensively. Let us look at question 4. Figure 4 summarizes the stages in the formation of the human fetus. So we have cell T U, then when these two combine they fertilize an egg. So the egg that is formed is the fertilized egg. Then after this a ball of cells formed, then we have the fetus. Then question L on manual 1, identify the cells labeled T and D U. So, you notice the difference between T and U. T has a tail, while U does not have a tail. So, this is a human fetus. So, because T has a, a tail, T should be the sperm. And what will be U? So, let us start with T. T is the sperm. So, one thing that you need to ask yourself is, what is the sperm? So the sperm is the male reproductive cell or gamete. Its main function is to fertilize the ovum. So the sperm unites with the ovum, which is the female reproductive gamete during fertilization, resulting in the formation of zygote. The sperm carries half of the genetic material which is needed to form a new individual. So if T is the sperm, this should be an ovum. So U is an ovum, which is in the female reproductive gamete. Then the next question is, what is the function of the ovum or the reproductive cell, female reproductive cell or female gamete? So the function is to carry the set of chromosomes contributed by the female gamete. That's the function of ovum. We need to know all those key important points. Once you know those, you'll be able to answer either multiple choice questions or short answer questions. Then what you need also to know is, it's important that you know what V is. So V is the placenta. So V is the placenta. So when you are studying, take note that you know all the key things that you need to know, otherwise you might be caught and prepared in your exam. Then the next question that you need to ask yourself is, what's the function of the placenta? So, the first thing that the placenta is a temporary organ that forms in the uterus during the pregnancy. This attaches uterine hole and provides nutrients and oxygen to them baby through the umbilical cord. That's the key things that the placenta does. Then Loma number 2 of A state one way in which cell T and cell U in figure 4 are genetically similar. So we have the sperm and the ovum. So what are the ways? In this case we are asked to give just one. So, in what ways are they similar? So, you can choose to speak about in N of the cases that I'm going to give you. So, the first thing that you need to know is they are similar in terms of chromosomes. So, you need to think about in terms of chromosomes. So, both the sperm and the ovum have the same number of chromosomes. So both have the same the same number of chromosomes in other ways there are aproids so they are they are 
app approach sales what does this mean so this means that they contain half the number of chromosomes of a normal diploid cell so a diploid cell has 46 chromosomes while an aploid has got 23 chromosomes so 23 chromosome is the half of the normal chromosomes of a diploid cell so that's the first one then you can also think about it in terms of gamete formation so number two if they ask you to give two so in terms of gamete formation so both the sperm and the ovum are produced by the same process of gamete formation which is the formation of the sex cells so this process is known as meiosis which is a type of cell division that refers to how the sex cells are formed so both are produced by the same process of gamete formation which is the formation of cells and this process is known as meiosis that's the name of the process then lastly, what you can think about, you can think about in terms of um, the production, if you ask to give two, no, which is in this case you, you are required to give three. So both the sperm and the ovum are reproductive cells, meaning that they are both needed for the production. So both um reproductive cells in case you ask to give three meaning they are both needed for the production so once you do that you are good to go loma numelon three of them and mention three functions of the part labeled v so the part labeled v is the placenta remember we talked about it so what we need is we need to list three functions so or mention so we're just mentioning then and some of these i already talked about them when we are answering the first part when explaining the law of the placenta so what are the main functions of the placenta so the placenta plays a, a crucial role in the development of the fetus so among the key functions is the supply of nutrients so which is a nutrient supply so the placenta transports nutrients from the mother's blood to the fetus so these nutrients include oxygen, glucose, amino acids, fats, vitamins, and minerals that are essential for the fetus growth and the development. Number two is waste removal. Again, the placenta also removes waste products from the fetus blood. These waste products are then eliminated by the mother's kidneys so that's the second key function then number three you can think about immunity so placenta offer immunity and protection so immunity and protection placenta provides immunity to the fetus by transferring antibodies from the mother this gives the fetus some protection against infections for a few months even after birth. Furthermore, the placenta acts as a barrier to protect the fetus from harmful substances, although it cannot keep everything from reaching the fetus. So these are the three that I've given you, but 
In case you have to give form, you can also think about it in terms of hormone production. The placenta produces hormones that are important for the pregnancy. These hormones help to maintain the pregnancy, prepare the mother's body for breastfeeding, and this also stimulates fetal growth. Then, um, number five, you can think about it in terms of gas exchange. So the placenta allows for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the mother and the fetus because oxygen from the mother's blood is key so it is transferred to the fetus and carbon dioxide from the fetus is transferred to the mother's in, uh, in the process of excretion so these are the functions that you can think about so I've given you five but in this case you are requested to give only three identify three causes of infertility in human beings that's question B so Again, in this case, we're just identifying. So we can start with uh, weak sperms. So weak sperms can cause infertility. So weak sperms often referred to as low sperm count or poor sperm quality can lead to infertility. This is because they may lack the necessary strength or quantity to reach and fertilize an ovum. Then we have STIs, which is sexually transmitted diseases sexually transmitted infections so STI like uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea can cause scaling and inflammation in the reproductive tract leading to conditions like pelvic inflammation diseases which can block the fallopian tubes and preventing infertilization. Then the second one that you can think about is a poor semen mobility. So poor semen mobility can also cause infertility. So sperm mobility refers to the ability of the sperm to move from one place to another and fertilize an egg. So without efficient movement towards an ovum this can cause infertility then a fibroids could be another one that you can think about which is number four fibroids so fibroids specifically the uterine fibroids are non-cancerous growths in the uterus that can block the fallopian tubes or change the shape of the uterus preventing the fertilized egg from reaching the uterus this can lead to infertility Number five, what you can think about is in alcoholism. Excessive alcohol consumption can negatively impact fertility in both men and women. In men, it can reduce testosterone levels affecting sperm quality and quantity. In women, it can cause hormonal imbalances affecting ovulation and menstrual cycle, hence leading to infertility. Number six, so you can just choose three which is now the blocked of ducts. So blocked fallopian tubes or oviducts prevent the sperm from reaching the, the ovum for fertilization. Hence blockage can be caused by scar tissues, infectious surgeries or any other thing. So this can lead to infertility. So you can choose any of these to answer this question and you get the full marks. So this is how you answer these questions. So I'm giving you more than necessary information so that it helps you to ensure that you answer these questions effectively.